Two and a half years ago, the Reverend Bernard Tringham became the rector of All Saints Church in the heart of Brisbane. At the time, both he and his wife were reluctant to accept that demonic spirits could haunt a building, especially a building like the century-old church and its nearby rectory, the home of Anglican clergymen for more than 70 years. But their views quickly changed when strange happenings occurred in the rectory on a winter's night. Well, I'd heard about it before I came here. I didn't give much credence to it, of course. And then I think we'd been here about two years when I had this first peculiar experience. Uh, and uh, my wife and I were sitting in this room here, and suddenly that very thick cedar door opened, which is behind you there, and in came this very damp, cold draught. And then we had a dog in the room with us. The dog stood up quite still, and up went its hackles. And then the door just closed. And that was the first experience. It's not at all possible that this door could just swing open by itself. Well, all I can recommend is you have a go at pulling it open. Um, and you can't do that. It's a red, solid red cedar door, and I think about two inches thick. At the time, what did you think was happening? Well, I don't know. I think I immediately recall the fact that I'd heard about the ghost. And uh, I thought, right, this is it. Has anybody here, though, actually seen the ghost? Have you seen it, Mrs. Yes, Trangham? I've definitely seen it. I was out on the top steps in the, uh, in the house, looking over towards the church, and I saw this um, figure or apparition uh, in white, and slowly went through the gate of the rectory over towards the church gate, <coughs> and then sort of disappeared toward into the church or by the side of the church. I've also seen it sitting on the seat, which is in front of the church. Well, to be quite honest, I was rather frightened the first time when the door opened here. I was just sitting in the house uh, on my own. This is before, uh, after my husband and I saw it together. And then when um, I saw it again in the church, by the church, I just, it's a peculiar sort of feeling. You feel cold, you've got hold of something which you can't explain, it's there, and nobody really believes you. Fifteen miles away, similar happenings have taken place. In this run-down weatherboard house, lost in the trees in the isolated suburb of Gumdale, a family of British migrants believe they're being haunted by the spirit of their dead grandfather. Mr. Clark, Mr. Roy Clark, his wife and their five children, moved into the house six months ago. Each night since then, they claim they've been disturbed by inexplicable happenings. You hear, um Noises, you know, you just can't explain. They're not outside, they're inside, and you sort of just can't pinpoint what the noises are. And then um, you, sort of, you can be lying in bed and you just sort of get a, like a heavy weight sit on you, you know, and it's really, really heavy. You can't put your feet down. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, the um, blankets or the sheets will just rip completely off of you, you know, and just suddenly hanging on to them so that uh, you don't sort of lose them again. Is it possible, though, that, I mean, there could be a simple explanation for all of these things, the noises you've heard and the lights going on and off? No, they can't because the switches aren't faulty, you know. I mean, the light switch over there is very We've stiff. We've got it all checked by the electricity board. They've checked all the supply out and they've found no faults whatsoever. You're quite, quite convinced, then, that the house is haunted, but have any of you seen the ghost? Yes, my daughter yes. has. My son saw the shadow this morning, another shadow this morning, and we've actually seen shadows at night time in here. Julian, you've actually seen this ghost. Then. Could yes. you tell me what happened the night you saw the ghost? Well, he was just sitting there on the stool with a stupid grin on his face. Beside your bed? Yes. Were you asleep, or how did it wake you up? Oh, I, something woke me up, and I just... I was lying down in bed and I thought it was Dad sitting on the stool next to me. So I put my arm out and my arm just went straight through him.
For most people, the experiences of Father Tringham and the Clark family are hard to believe. But for those who've been confronted with the inexplicable, it's a serious matter. A medium offered to rid the Clarks of their ghosts for $170, but with Roy Clark out of work, they couldn't afford it. They turned to the church for assistance. I had to, yes, because it's making the children very sick. I couldn't sleep and the kids are on sedatives and they can't sell drugs for the rest of their lives, you know. And we called in a minister to see if he could get rid of it for us. He came in, I think it was a week ago Saturday, about 10 o'clock in the morning, and he was in the lounge and he got out his Bible and he told us that he needed all our concentration, you know, we had to put our thoughts sort of all together, you know, and all think of the same thing to get rid of him sort of thing. And he said prayers. And as he was saying these prayers, it was rude really in one aspect because you couldn't really concentrate on what he was saying because it just sounded as though it was just like a tornado going through the house and the beds were rattling and squeaking. And uh, after he'd gone, we went into the bedrooms, you know, it was really touching to sort of go in there and see it. And the whole beds were stripped completely off, you know, it just had gone mad. He carried out then a complete service yes. of exorcism to try and get rid of this ghost, yes. but mm. he hasn't succeeded. No, no, the children said to us afterwards, like after the minister had gone, he said, well, he's not gone. I said, well, why? They said, well, whilst he was saying the prayers, they said there was somebody holding on to our legs all the time. As though he was still here holding on. He said, to say, well, I'm not going, I'm going to stay, and that's it. A Baptist minister agreed to perform the ceremony. It was one of the rare occasions when a minister from the Orthodox Church was prepared to tackle the supernatural. However, one church that openly recognises the power of spirits is the breakaway Pentecostal movement, the Assemblies of God. Its spokesman in Queensland is Pastor Gerald Rowlands. I think they're very real. I believe that they are wicked spirits, or perhaps a better word is naughty spirits. Uh, that the, the work of spirits is very varied and some of them are intensely evil and others seem to uh, go in for pranks for want of a better phrase. In those two cases what sort of explanation is there for this phenomenon taking place in two different houses? It may be something that has been associated with the history of those houses. For instance I have known of houses which have been haunted in which someone has committed suicide and uh, probably the forces which have driven them to suicide that have come in times of tragedy to the family or a member of the family or someone in the house have remained in the house to plague people who can come in afterwards. You know, some of the things that happen couldn't possibly be the figment of imagination when you get doors opening and closing on their own and sometimes crockery flying around the house and furniture being moved and this sort of thing. This is not uh, imagination. Whatever the Anglican Committee of Inquiry decides, it seems unlikely that the mysteries of the supernatural and the occult will ever be solved. The only possible answers will be provided by those people who have experienced the strange world of spiritualism and have come face to face with the inexplicable.